Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I want to talk about one of the more popular editing techniques used in landscape photography, and that is the Orton effect. And the Orton effect is a process where you combine two images of the same composition, same scene, to create a final image that has some high detail and some low detail areas. And really where you see this today, it's become really popular in the sunrise, sunset landscape photography to kind of add this glow, this kind of dreamy ethereal effect to your images. It's a really unique, cool editing technique, but I think it's one that can be overdone and is overdone a lot. So you want to make sure you're subtle. When you're subtle, it can really add this, like I said, this dreamy effect to your images. Overdone, it doesn't look professional. It doesn't look real. So most of the time you're going to see this with sunrise, sunset images. Where I actually like to use the Orton effect is in woodland scenes. I think it can really add this, like I said, this ethereal, mystical, almost like fantasy type effect to your woodland scenes. It really almost looks like you're creating atmosphere or fog in your woodland scenes and kind of adding this depth even if there wasn't any. And like I said, that's because you're adding these layers of high and low detail. So today I'm gonna to take one of my favorite woodland images. I, don't, I haven't actually shown it to anyone yet. Um, I'm gonna post a video next week about the on location shoot I had when I took this image. But I just wanna talk about it today and kind of walk you through how I add the Orton effect to my images. I don't wanna preface that by saying in no way am I a Photoshop wizard or the master in the Orton effect or anything like that. So don't be too harsh on me if this is not the best way you can add it or the optimum way. It's just the way I like to do it and it works for me. So first I want to show you this fi the final image that's been completed. And as you can see, it kind of really has this nice soft background. It's kind of those lighter colors in the background just kind of fade away and really add some depth and atmosphere to this really magical looking tree. The tree in the foreground is really high detail, really sharp. And the background slowly loses that detail and almost has this glowing, foggy kind of effect and really adds this kind of magical looking scene. And that background is really where I've kind of applied the Orton effect. I have that background in lower detail, foreground in higher detail, and it really just adds those, adds that magical effect. So I'm just gonna walk through really quick what I did to achieve that look and how I go about applying the Orton effect in Photoshop. So let me share my screen with you really quick. Okay, so now hopefully you can see my screen on here. And you wanna start by editing your image in Lightroom in Photoshop, whatever you add, do your original edits. And as you can see, I started in Lightroom, imported into Photoshop, made some final tweaks here. And this is my image before I add the Orton effect. I like to add the Orton effect last. It's really the last thing I do before I export my images, before I check them once again in Lightroom, just to make sure they're good exposure for printing, things like that. But I've made all my color adjustments, dodging and burning, hue, saturation, whatever it might be, I've already done all that. And now I'm really just ready to add that Orton effect as my final kind of finishing step. So first, what I'm gonna do, I'm on this last layer here, which is a hue saturation layer that I applied, and I wanna create a merged visible layer. And to do that on a Mac, I'm just gonna go Command, Option, Shift, E. And on Windows, I believe that would be Control Alt Shift E. And that just creates a layer that includes all of all of the layers that you've done so far. It's really just a copy of everything you've done to that image. So now that we have that copy, we're gonna come up to filter. We're gonna come down here to blur, Gaussian blur, and you're gonna wanna play around with this, but you usually want a radius between 20 and 30 pixels just to get that soft look. I'm gonna say okay. Right, and now we have this very blurry looking image of our tree. Here's, here's I kind of unclick this layer, take this layer off. You see this very blurry image. And that's not really what we want, obviously. 
but this is our low detail image that we're gonna combine with our normal high detail image creating our Orton effect. So while we're selected on this new merge visible layer that has that Gaussian blur, we're gonna come down here and add a layer mask. That layer mask is all white, which means it is revealing this new layer. If it was all black, we wouldn't be able to see any of it. So what I wanna do here, well, so actually first what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over to opacity while I'm selected on that layer. I'm gonna bring down the opacity to a point where I think it looks good. Just like I said before, the Orton effect can be overdone. It doesn't look professional when you overdo it. It looks amateurish and it really takes away, even if you've taken a great image, you can butcher it in editing and we don't wanna do that. So there you can see we've taken down this opacity and we really have this really glowy, really glowy looking image. I'll toggle it on and off for you. There's it with it on. It's really kind of hazy looking, glowy. It doesn't look out, quite out of focus. It's different than out of focus. It just looks really just like it's glowing. So I'll toggle it off for you. There's our sharp image and there's it with it on. So I could end there and you'd be like, well, that, that's okay for me. Um, what I, I like that tree to be a little sharper. So like I said, it has, I have this layer mask, white reveals, black conceals. So we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna switch over to black here. And I'm just gonna paint away on the center part of this tree. I'm actually gonna bring my flow down of my brush because I don't wanna take it all the way right away. So I'm gonna bring down maybe to 15% here or something. Make, I got this nice big soft brush and I'm just gonna paint away in this middle portion. Okay, so I'm just taking away a little bit of that Orton effect on the main part of this tree just so we can get some of that texture back in the bark. Okay, so you can see I have this little bit of a layer mask here now with just some gray taking away from that blurry layer. So now if I toggle it on and off, you can see that background still comes in very dreamy looking and I've probably overdone it a little here, but I just want you to really be able to see what this Orton effect does. But by adding this layer mask, I've brought a little bit of texture back in the bark here. I might add a little bit more back even. Okay, that's looking a little better. So like I said, it's probably overdone a little bit here, um, but I hope you can see really what I've done. So that, that background of this image is now looking really, really atmospheric, really misty, really foggy, really has that dreamlike look. So that's one way you can apply the Orton effect. That is not actually the way that I do it, but that's the simplest way and a way that anyone with Photoshop can do. So I'm gonna get rid of this layer here really quick. Okay. So now we're back to our normal image. I'm gonna extend my panel here. I have a Lumenzia panel uh, imported into my Photoshop and it's just a panel where I can apl easily apply luminosity masks. And lumin luminosity masks, like that layer mask I just created, mask things out based on lightness and darkness in the image. And for me, the Orton I usually like to apply the Orton effect to the highlights of my image, those brighter spots. So if that's a sunrise or a sunset, it's probably the sky. In this woodland scene, for example, those foggier, uh, more atmospheric areas, areas are usually a little bit brighter. That tree is darker. So I'm gonna apply the effect to those lighter portions. So again, we're gonna come down here we're gonna create another merge visible layer. And we know what that is now. So now instead of creating a layer mask for that layer, I'm gonna create the layer mask a little bit differently. So I'm gonna come up here to my Lumenzia panel and I'm gonna create a, a luminosity mask based on lightness, not darkness. So the lighter areas, as you can see, this is kind of a copy of that layer mask. The lighter areas in my image are gonna reveal the uh, Orton effect, 
and the darker areas will conceal it. So that's still a little too much on the tree for me, so I'm just gonna tone that down a little bit. I can just bring this slider down, which is a really nice thing about the Lumenzia panel. Um, I love having this little slider here. Okay, so now we're a little darker on the bark of the tree. That'll keep some of the texture there. Let me get a little darker. Okay, we'll come down here to mask. Just take a second. Great, now we have that layer with a mask. Let me get this a little bigger. Okay. And we're going to come up here again, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, 30, just kind of where I like it. And we have mainly applied this effect now only to that background because of our luminosity mask, which makes things really easy. That's still a little overdone, but I'll toggle it on and off so you can really see that's with it off. On, we have such that blurry background. We still have texture in our bark because of our luminosity mask, but we're still going to tone it down a little bit. Um, if this is the actual image, that's, that's still a little too much for me, but at least you can see it when I have it a little bit more. Um, we're down 38% now. That's subtle, and that's probably where I would keep it. Um, I'll toggle that on and off for you again, just to make sure you can see that. So, yeah, I think that subtle or an effect is a lot, a lot more pleasing, a lot more professional looking, and that that adds something to your image without taking away. Uh, if you overdo it, you start to take away from your image. Because don't get me wrong, editing is important, and do it, knowing effects like the Orton effect can really elevate your photography. But taking the picture is the most important. And if you've taken a fantastic image, the last thing you want to do is edit over the top and take away from that great composition, that great image. So I know that was a quick episode this week. I just wanted to talk about the Orton effect. You see it so much and it's so popular right now. And I think it's a cool editing technique. It's just something you want to make sure, like any editing technique that you're not overdoing. But I hope that you found the way I explained that and the way that I implement the Orton effect useful. For me, it's simple. Um, I like that, that first method you can implement without any fancy luminosity panels. Uh, however, I would recommend anyone that's serious about photography to go out and get a luminosity panel. They're not that expensive. Uh, it's a great Photoshop plugin and there's so many of them now and it really is a way to elevate your game because I use luminosity masks for all sorts of things, whether that's exposure blending, time blending, um, Orton effect, just really, really being able to prioritize and localize your adjustments in Photoshop based on light is, is invaluable, really. I use Lumenzia. It's great. It's simple. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. It really just focuses on luminosity masks. There's some panels that do a lot more. Um, and you can go ahead and, I mean, you can just type in Photoshop luminosity panels and you'll come up with a whole list of them. There's so many of them, I'm not gonna go into all of them, but I like Lumenzia, it's simple, the, uh, it gets free updates. Um, so yeah, if you wanna go that, sim that first route, that's very simple. If you wanna go that second route with a Luminosity Max panel, that Photoshop plugin, that's another great way to do it. That's the way I usually do it. it makes things easier, and it's a more polished, finished image. So that'll do it for this week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed learning about the Orton Effect and a couple different ways to implement it. If you found it helpful, if you could consider giving this video a like and hitting that subscribe button, that would really help me out. I really appreciate it. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Stay safe, everyone. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.